Hello and welcome to CUV and Christians Night Broadcast Network. I am your host, Troy. This is CUV and Live. Thank you for coming. This is Troy's News and Reviews. What we got in the news today, ending the nightmare protecting kids from sexual abuse. I have so much confidence that I will get passed in every state because the Lord is right there with me. Erin Marin, Marion. Cook County, Illinois. Author, the activist, Erin Marion, is on a mission to protect children from being sexually abused. With millions of victims in the United States alone, the Illinois woman is, talk, is taking her fight to all 50 states and beyond. People magazine named her one of the 15 women changing the world with a, with a bubbly baby girl, supportive husband, and an inf infectious personality. You never guess Erin Merlin Marian has endured tragic, unimaginable acts. The vibrant 30-year-old is a survivor of sexual abuse. Mm -mm -mm. Marian said it started when she was just six years old. At her first sleepover, she said the uncle of her best friend sexually abused her during the night. I could see his face because I was sleeping above the bedroom window and the street lights shined in. So I could see this man's face looking at me, telling me to be quiet, she told CBN News. So of course, I've got this authority figure standing over me. I didn't get, I didn't get quiet. And for the first time, he sexually abused me. The first time. Marion never told anyone, as she says, until she turned eight and a half. When her family moved from the area, the man repeatedly sexually abused her. He evenly, brutally raped her, just weeks shy of her seventh birthday. I can remember that moment as if it, were, if, as if it happened yesterday, she said. I couldn't tell you what I ate for breakfast last week. But I can remember that moment, more than 22 years later, being that little kid. And the look in this man's eyes, the color and the design on his shirt, the closet doors open with the dresses, hanging the toys on the floor. When a kid is traumatized like this, it doesn't go away. She said he continued to threaten her to keep to keep her quiet and she complained and she complied he told me <clears throat> that if I told anybody my parents would believe me my parents wouldn't believe me he'd come get me as a matter of fact he told me my parents wouldn't wouldn't love me anymore he brainwashed me Marianne explained no one had been in educating me no one had been educating me saying you don't keep these kinds of secrets you'll be you'll be believed this isn't your fault even after she and her family moved to a new neighborhood sex, sexual abuse continued Marianne said this time this time the perpetrator was an old older cousin Someone she had viewed as a brother figure. It's often people you trust with your kids that you think would never do something like this. She said he, she said he, she said he told me. Just like in the past by this other per perpetrator, Erin, this is our little secret. No one will believe you if you tell anybody. You've got no proof that I'm doing this to you. You will destroy your family. And so he proceeded from age 11, 12, 13 to continue to sexually abuse me. Thanksgiving Christmas, Marianne wrote about her disappear, her despair 
in her childhood diary. She read one entry, January 7, 1998. I was 12 years old. On, I, was, I was 12 years old. On 2.40 a.m., dear God, please help me. I can't take this much more. I can't barely sleep anymore. The nightmares have me up tossing and turning in my sleep. Marion finally broke her silence when her younger sister told, told her the, that she too was being sexually abused by the same cousin. The two told their parents who believed them 100%. The next step was telling her story to a, to a forensic investigator, forensic investigator at the children's ad adversary. Advice, advocacy, ad, ad, advocacy Center of North and Northwest Cook County. More than 900 of these nonprofit centers exist around the country. It's extremely important that the centers like this exist, that kids have the safe place to come to talk, that families get the support they need to heal from these traumas that they've experienced. Mark Parr, executive director of the center, told CBN News. The room where Marion found her voice has a two-way mirror. As she shared her story with a trained therapist behind that mirror, investigators listened, collecting information to build a case against the perpetrator. I walked out of this center like I said, feeling this burden just lifted from my shoulders and knowing I had the support that for the longest time that I felt so alone that nobody understood, Marilyn's, Marianne, Marianne said. Marianne said her cousin confessed to the crime, was sentenced to seven years probation and put in a sex offender treatment program instead of receiving jail time. However, her early childhood abuser was never prosecuted. What Marion and her sister went through is by no means isolated. There's no sign across the forehead that says, I was abused, and yet one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused by the 18th birthday, she said. Marion eventually went on to become a social worker at the, cons the counseling agency. But God had different plans for her to help children and teens on a national and international level. He used her childhood diary to, to spark a new idea. I was reading this passage that struck me as I said, they don't teach us that in school they teach us tornado drills fire drills, bus drills, bullying intervention, internet safety. I still have my I still have my dare card that taught us the eight ways to say no to drugs, she said. She shared. But I didn't know how to say no to my abuse or tell somebody. And so this was on my heart for a while, she continued. And then one night, in the middle of the night, I heard God speak to me. She told CBN News, I was clearly hearing him speak to me, saying, Erin, you need to quit your job. This is not where you belong. You need to go after this law that, was been, that has been on your heart for many months now. And that is when Erin's law was born. The law requires age-appropriate personnel, body, safety, and sexual abuse prevention, cir cir circulum, no curriculum, for pre-kindergarten through 12th grade students in public schools. It educates kids on safe touch, unsafe touch, safe secrets, unsafe secrets, how to get away and tell. Marion is on the mission to find either a state senator or representative in each state to sponsor the bill, draft it, draft it 
and introduce it to lawmakers for an eventual vote. Erwin's law is spreading like wildfire, even drawing the attention of celebrities like Oprah and Katie Couric. The magazines like People and, Glam and Glamour, in a little more than four years, it's passed in 21 states and pending in 22, with seven to go. I feel so blessed with where my life is today. Yes, what happened was tragic, but I've reached this triumph of putting a face and a voice on this, and I couldn't have done it without the Lord guiding me. Marian said, and that's why I have so much confidence. I have so much confidence that I will get this passed in every state because the Lord is right there with me, she said. It's legacy she'll leave for her baby girl and millions of other children who become of a law will be protected from the grip of sexual abuse. Amen to this woman. I like how she put her foot down. And she didn't take it. And she started to come to this point where she decided to try to make a law in the situation where she felt like if someone told her, it would be at a point where she could have corrected it instead of being scared. Because you as a child don't know any better. You're going to listen to the adult no matter what the adults say. So you have to try to find a way that you can communicate with your kids. You as a parent should explain these things to your kids. Now, I know they want to make a legal thing of it, but I don't think there should be any legal thing. I think as a parent, this story should reach parents all around the world. And parents should be the law. Parents should actually teach their kids to try to fight this and stay away from things like this. Because, you know, in situations like this, your kids need to know. And if you're, a, if you're an uncle or an auntie, you need to push these parents to try to talk to the kids in these certain ways. Because if they don't and things like this happens, and you're just gonna mess your child's head up. You know, it's just gonna be a messed up thing that it just it's just terrible. You know, it's just ending the nightmare protecting kids from sexual abuse. That's amazing.